Good afternoon, my friends. Well, several of you have asked for another story time video, and um, well, I figured I better do that. So uh, here goes. This um, this video is about how I ended up being a teacher in Thailand. Um, well, I guess the 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 whole thing started uh one day i bought a webcam and um you could kind of say what <laughs> but yeah that was uh the beginning of it um but yeah i um i bought a webcam and uh this is back in 2001 and uh not a lot of people had webcams so uh, so it was uh Nice to have a cam, but I didn't have anyone to cam with. Um, then one day, approximately a month after I bought the cam, I was talking online to one of my friends who also had a webcam. And um, he asked me, so you found anyone to cam chat with? And uh, well, no, I had not, only him. And well, he was not all that interesting to look at, so. <laughs> Anyway, um, he told me, yeah, I just started talking to a lady from South Thailand. Uh, would you like to talk to her? Because she got cam. And I'm like, yeah, sure. It's, that would be one way to to uh, try to use the cam. And uh, and he said, oh, I'll just give you her, her what was it called? Messenger, I believe. A net meeting. I don't remember the the um, yeah, MSN Messenger. It was called back then. Uh, name uh, and I was like, well, you better ask her first to make sure that she thinks it's okay. You give her, or you give me her her MSN Messenger uh, info. And he was like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And, and he just sent her a message and, and she agreed to it. And then um, he gave me the, the messenger ID and I texted her. And um, nothing happened. And I was like, oh, that's strange. I sent another message and, and then I got back to my friend and, and texted him and said, well, um, she don't answer. You sure? She said it was okay. And he was like, ah, I'm just going to ask her. So he uh, texted her and, and then he sent me a message back laughing. And he said, well, she thought it was someone else. So she just ignored me. But uh, he said that she would uh, unignore me and then answer my, and so she did. Um, we talked and uh, she was quite interesting and she had just been to both New Zealand and Australia and as you know I have been to Australia as well so so we had something in common and we were talking and it was very interesting and uh, well all of a sudden <laughs> well at one point not all, all of a sudden but at one point I uh, look at my at my watch and I realized that I had been talking to this lady from South Thailand for eight hours. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> and then realizing that Thailand is actually nine hours ahead of Denmark. So, and it was like late evening in my place. And we had been talking. So we must have been talking all night. Um, and I was like, oi. Don't you think we better uh, end this so uh, so you can get some sleep? And she was like, no, it's okay. I need to start cooking breakfast for my mom now. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> she had been talking all night. But it was very interesting. And we agreed to that we wanted to talk again. And well, I went, we ended the call and I went to bed. Um, of course, already next, e next evening after I came home from work, we talked again. And, and it just went on like that for six months. And, uh, well, yeah, both of us realized that uh, this was not just some interesting person to talk to. That it was more than that. And, and we uh, got quite fond of each other. And I guess we uh, 
realized that uh, we needed to meet. So uh, the Christmas 2001-2002, I actually went to Thailand for a Christmas New Year vacation and uh, met this lady. And of course, yeah, as you probably figured out by now, this lady is my ex-wife who later became Dana's mom. Um, and yeah, I went to uh, Thailand to visit her. And uh, actually that, uh, <laughs> that also, you know, it was like, I had of course bought the cheapest ticket, the cheapest plane ticket I could find. You know, just to, well, I didn't want to spend more money than I absolutely have to, so I found the cheapest ticket. And uh, that was with the Aeroflot, uh, Aeroflot the, the Russian, uh, Russian company. And uh, flying down there, the whole trip got delayed. I don't remember if it was, you know, I flew from Denmark to Moscow and then from Moscow to Bangkok. And I don't really remember where the delay came in, but it it was delayed approximately an hour in, in arrival to Bangkok. Um, and um, yeah, I, I went to the baggage claim and uh, baggage st started coming and I was looking for my bag and well, and then no more bags came out and I still didn't have my bag. So, um, so I was kind of, ah, my bag. So I went to some, uh, some staff, airport staff who was in the area and asked, uh, is that it? Because I didn't get my bag. And they were like, ah, oh, we need to take you to somewhere. And they took me to a, first to a room where I could tell them if my bag was in that room. And I looked around and no, it wasn't. And then I had to go to an office to to sign some papers that my bag was lost and give them information where to bring it and uh, if and when they found it. Um, and, uh, well, I uh, told them to bring it to the airport in that town where where my, uh, well, Dana's mom uh, was, was living. So... Um, because of all this, I get out into the arrival area where Jeb uh, was waiting for me. Well, I was getting worried, you know, because I was three hours late. And I was like, wonder if she's still there, you know, it's... But uh, as it came out, she was still there and she was worried and, you know, we hugged and... and Actually, at that point, I was extremely hungry and uh, actually had a headache as well. Uh, just, you know, the whole situation was just insane. But uh, we went to get something to eat and then catch the train. Went to the train station and catch the train to to uh, the, pl the town where she lived. And that was like a 10-hour train ride. Um, but it was all good. She had booked tickets on the sleeper train from Bangkok to to the south of Thailand where she lived and uh, and uh, it was all good. It was a nice train ride and very different from anything I've ever experienced. Uh, but anyway, we um, we had a good time. Uh, we first we went home to to uh, her mom's house and I had the chance to meet her mom and her well some other members of her family and it was it was quite interesting well and out of respect for her mom then we decided that I should stay at a hotel we were gonna stay in in that town for one night and then we were gonna drive to the to a tourist area to the tourist island of uh, Koh Samui uh, and we were gonna spend Christmas in that island um, and uh, it was all good and, and well I stayed in the hotel and the next morning she came and woke me up and took me back to the house and we had breakfast at her mom's house and got everything ready and then we got a call from the airport that they found my bag and it was on its way to uh, to Surat 
to the town where she lived, uh, to the airport. And um, we realized we would have to go get my bag first uh, before we went uh, to our Christmas destination. And then um, after that, we went on the, uh, actually on the small 100cc scooter. I was driving and she was on the back of the scooter and we went, I think it was 60 kilometers out of town to where the, the ferry to Koh Samui leave from. We had a great time in Samui. Um, we rented a small bungalow and uh, and we really enjoyed ourselves. Um, and and uh, Christmas Eve we were in, uh, we found a small restaurant at the side of the road and we sat outside and ate our Christmas dinner and it was just traditional Thai food and it, I, I totally love Thai food so it was all good um, and we had a wonderful time and the funny part is and that already when we met in the airport it felt like meeting an old friend we knew everything about each other you know we had been talking for yeah, six to eight hours every day for six months before this. So uh, so there was really no surprises and no secrets or anything. We just... Yeah, it was perfect. We stayed in Samui for... I think it was four days. Yeah, I believe so. And, you know, ate breakfast at a... In one place where they made uh, homemade yogurt with fruit and muesli and all kinds of stuff. It was really delicious. At this time, part of Koh Samui was touristy. Uh, and other parts of the island was more for the local people. And well, Jeb was pretty well known on, on Samui. She, she knew the place. And she knew where to take me and where the good f local food would be. And, you know, if you stay away from the tourist areas, it's even cheaper than... than uh, and the food is just so delicious. And, and and also, of course, because she knew people over there and, and uh, being a local and, and all, it's just... Yeah, it was really great. So... Um, Time was up and we got on the bike again and went back to uh, to the mainland and went back to Surat and again I booked a room at a hotel. You know, it's like we were not married or anything, so, you know, to respect her mom and, and her traditions, then we did it this way. But anyway, um, the first evening we were back, we went for a walk at the night market and... Uh, I saw at one stall they made a milkshake and uh, I bought a pineapple milk milkshake and uh, it was really delicious and uh, and I felt well I was really good and very cheap and and all and after dinner I went back to uh, the hotel to sleep and during the night I woke up with an incredible saw Tommy and also I was nauseous so that night I spent the entire night well basically in the restroom and I was sick and I was sick to my tummy and I was just horrible um, I couldn't hold anything in I tried to drink some water and it came right out again and it was just, and obviously I got very dehydrated. So in the morning, when Jeff came back to the hotel to pick me up to go back and eat breakfast, I was literally on top of the bed looking, well, she told me that I, I looked more dead than alive. I was so sick. I was just, no power, hadn't got any sleep. And it was just, I felt... Yeah, I felt like, shoot me. I <laughs> just... <laughs> anyway, she got me uh, out of the room and down and back uh, to her mom house on the back of the scooter. And 
she put me on a mat on the floor in their living room and called one of her friends who was a nurse. And this friend brought some uh, electrolyte, um, yeah, some powder she would put in water and have me drink. Uh, and also she made some, uh, uh, she made some rice soup uh, because that's very, um, well, there's a lot of, of uh, carbohydrates and she would put some salt and some different things in this to to get me back to health and, and to make sure I was not dehydrated anymore. And uh, her friend gave me a couple of pills to stop the nausea and uh, yeah, some different things. They, they knew what to do and, and uh, obviously I had food poisoning. The, um, the milkshake I bought Already when I bought it, Dieb was like, uh, I'm not sure about this stall. I I never bought anything from them. And I was like, ah, I think it'll be all right. I got strong, Tommy. Well, I guess my Tommy was not strong enough. Um, anyway, um, this, th this day in the evening, we were supposed to catch a train back to Bangkok and then catch a, a bus from Bangkok to the north of Thailand to visit her sister who lived up there and I was still feeling really really sick I was well no power and uh, but well I didn't have diarrhea anymore and I didn't feel nauseous anymore I was just drained but anyway, we needed to go because we were, the plan was that we were going to celebrate New Year in in uh, her sister's place. Um, we got to the train station and got into the train and got a got to our seats. And in in these trains, in the sleeper train in Thailand, well, when you're two people, you have two seats opposite each other, and in the evening. When it's time to sleep, a staff member from the train will come and fold the seat down. So that makes makes up one bed on the bottom. And then they have a bunk that folds down like this that makes another bed. So there's two beds, one above each other, like bunk beds. Um, and then there's a curtain to separate it from the, the corridor. And... Uh, well, it was, it, we, we slept on this kind of train when we went from Bangkok to Surat and it was the same kind of train. So it was all good. And I was like, well, it's pretty cool. And you sleep, sleep very well. And I, well, at least I do. I sleep very well on these kind of trains, you know, the movement of the train, a little bit of a rattle and fresh air. And, and I actually believe, yeah, it was an aircon uh, train, this one. So it's nice and cool, you know, and. Yeah, 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 it was all good, and you get, you know, duvets and pillows and blankets and everything, so it's it's really good, really nice. Um, I still didn't feel very well, but anyway, I got the chance to lay down and sleep, and, uh, and I did actually get some sleep, and woke up the next morning, we were in Bangkok, and got dressed and got out of the train, and I believe we catched a, yeah, we catched a tuk-tuk, one of these three-wheeled uh, motorcycle hybrid uh, things, you know, they only have in Thailand, I believe, um, from the, the train station to the bus station. And uh, when we get to the bus station and get on the bus, we found out that the bus was overbooked and uh, in Thailand that's perfectly normal. Um, Jeff got a seat but I didn't have a seat. Uh, well after a little while you know at, at, the, at first I, I didn't think I would have a seat but then they brought a pile of stools, plastic stools and they put them in the in the walkway in the middle of the bus for the people who are standing there to sit on. So I was sitting on a plastic stool in the middle of the walkway in the bus on the way from Bangkok 
to the north in Thailand. And that trip, I don't remember how long it took, but it was several hours. And I was still feeling, well, absolutely not top. Uh, I was tired and, well, yeah, not feeling well, that's for sure. But anyway, it was all right. It was just, you know, part of the experience. A uh, very different way of traveling, that's for sure. But uh, anyway, we arrived to the town where her sister lived and her sister was there with the car to, to greet us and take us. First, he, we went to her sister's house. And uh, and after that, we uh, she took us to another house that they, uh, her sister and, and the sister's husband also owned. Um, and we would stay there for for the the vacation. Well, for the time we were in that town. Um, the New Year's Eve, I would go back to Denmark. I would fly back to Denmark the first of January. So New Year's Eve, we literally spent in her sister's house, the house where we were staying alone, just Jeb and I. And knowing that I would go back to Denmark the next day, that was not very pleasant. We, um, it was not Happy New Year, that's for sure. We were quite sad, obviously. But anyway, we at the same time agreed to that we needed to see each other again and we were meant for each other, that's for sure. And that, uh, and we, uh, yeah, the next day we went back to Bangkok and I got on the plane and flew back to Denmark. Now in the, the beginning of March, and now we talk 2002, beginning of March she came to Denmark and she had this three months visa, three months tourist visa for Denmark. Um, we had a great time. We had a, um, you know, we stayed in my small one room apartment and I would go work in the daytime. And when, uh, when we had days off, we would go drive on my motorcycle or whatever, you know, we had a wonderful time and it was just perfect. And we uh, decided that we wanted to get married um and so we did <laughs> uh 3rd of may we uh, got married and uh, we just had a very small wedding um it was uh, my one of my friends well actually two of my friends and my parents who came to the to the wedding uh we only invited them and my parents were the the what do you call the witness at the wedding and uh, after the ceremony at the we were married at city hall because well both Jeb and I are Buddhists so not really a church wedding for us uh, but after the ceremony at, at city hall we went to uh, a small Chinese restaurant in town and had our wedding dinner and luckily my parents they love Chinese food as well and 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 we had a great day anyway after this we just kind of you know at this point we, we already knew that we had to go back to Thailand to live because um, the immigration law in Denmark is and even at that time was very very strict um, and there was no way that uh, that Jeb could get permission to stay in Denmark. Um, first of all, my apartment was too small. I didn't make em enough money. Even I worked a perfectly fine full-time job, and uh, there was a lot of reasons. So, um, so we decided, well, we'll just go back to Thailand and live there. We went back to Thailand, and uh, at this point, I had not really looked into what kind of job I could do in Thailand. Uh, Jib's brother had told me that uh, if I wanted to, I could come work for him. He got a furniture factory and, and uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, he also have a pr rubber plantation and he got an orange 
or actually Mandarin plantation and a lot of different things. But after we arrived in Thailand, we realized that that was not going to happen because there are only a certain number of jobs that foreigners are allowed to do in Thailand. So the working for her brother would just that that was not going to happen. Um, but yeah, in the beginning we lived there. We actually decided to make an income by uh, making cupcakes. So we would bake cupcakes, put them in small plastic bags, four cupcakes in each bag, and then drive around town to small grocery stores and put our cakes. And then we would sell them for 10 baht. And that's not a lot of money. Thai baht is not very... Uh, uh, in in I don't remember the exchange rate, but it's it's ten baht is cheap. It's uh, it is. Um, but the deal was that a bag of cake would cost ten baht, and if the shop sold a bag, they would get two baht, and we would get eight baht. So the shops was yeah sure we can do that. Every day we would make fresh cakes, and we would drive around and, and change the bags so that you know like if we had a store then every second day we would go to that store and take the old cakes away and put new cakes and then of course get money from the store so um, so it was it was a good way of, of doing it but uh, and we did this for six months but after a while the prices on the ingredients and everything went up and we couldn't really uh, raise the price on the cakes and the 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 whole um, what you call it the the profit from this just became smaller and smaller and we realized we needed to do something else and that's um, that's when i realized well i guess i could um, apply to be an english teacher at this time i already had some uh, some private students that I was teaching uh, in a back room um, and uh, and I was like well let me try to apply for, uh, for a position as an English teacher and uh, at first I had a job for two terms at a Catholic school in town um, and after that I, I, I I have to say I didn't enjoy this job very much and they didn't pay much salary uh, it was really uh, and also they had some strange rules that uh, that I didn't really uh, agree to so uh, after two terms I uh, spotted a, an ad I think it was I don't remember where we saw this ad but it was a local um, a non local uh, language school that was about to open and they were looking for teachers and um, I replied to that and uh, actually my, my job interview was in the parking lot in front of the building where the school was going to be because the building was not ready they, they were having stuff done to the building to get it ready to become a school um, so it was literally in the parking lot in front of that building and I was hired the owner of the school was an American guy uh, and his Thai wife so um, well yeah I got a position there and within a year I uh, well moved up in rank from being just the, the teacher to become the assistant director and uh, still teaching and and uh, but also uh, you know uh, being the connection between the owner of the school and the other teachers so uh, and of course that gave me a raise so uh, so that was uh, that was good I was teaching uh, I was teaching in-house students students who came to this language school um, to study but it uh, and you have to realize this this language school 
kids would go there to study after they finish uh, the normal school. Uh, either they went to public school or private school. Then after school finish, they would go to this language school and study English to become even better. Um, but also, I was also teaching as a teacher at a local school. Uh, so a local private school would have a contract with this uh, language school that they would send a teacher to teach classes at the school, at the, the private school. And I had one of these contracts and um, I was teaching, well, basically all the students at this uh, school and that was from five-year-olds to 18-year-olds. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed this job. It was so much fun and it was very rewarding. Um, I was at the language school for two years. Uh, and at that point I decided to uh, not renew my contract. I had a, a two-year contract and I decided not to renew it for, well, different reasons. I, I There was some different reasons for not renewing it, one of them being that I couldn't agree to the the way the school was run and, and there was a lot of problems, uh, financial problems for the school and and everything and, and uh, another thing was that the owner of the school was not very nice to his, to his uh, Thai wife, he would be shouting at her in the literally in the school while students were listening and stuff like that and it was just like nope I want out this is not this is not the right thing so I actually found a job at another language school and it was only I was actually at, at that place at the other language school I was only working there for a month before I was contacted by a student who studied at this new language school uh, one of the girls and she brought me a letter from the owner of the school where I had been working a contract for the for the previous language school um, and the letter basically said that the owner of that school would like to talk to me she would like to meet with me and and, uh, and if I could call her and so we could uh, have a meeting um, I decided to do one better, so I just got on one day after I finished work. I got on the scooter and drove to uh, to that school and uh, went to talk to the owner of the school just like that. And uh, we sat down and, and had a conversation and she actually told me that the, the owner of the language school had told her that I had left Thailand with my family and gone back to Denmark. And that's why he couldn't send me to her school anymore. And also that the teachers he sent after I left was, well, she was not happy about it. She was not satisfied about the, the, the new teachers. There had actually been three teachers after, the three different teachers in a month. And she was, she wanted me back. I told her, well, that's very nice of you, but the thing is, I already signed a contract with the new language school, and um, but yeah, I would like to come back. But uh, and then she said, "Well, here's what I can offer you. I want to pay you the same amount I paid the language school." Um, <clears throat> when I worked for the language school, I got paid twenty-five thousand baht a month, and she wanted to pay me. 35,000 baht. It sounds like a lot, but actually in Thailand it is a lot. If I calculate it into to, uh, Danish krona or for that matter American dollars, it's not a lot. Um, but in Thailand it is. Um, the local teachers who worked at this school, this prim private uh, primary school, they got paid between seven and eight thousand baht a month, and she wanted to pay me thirty-five thousand. So, well, that kind of shows you how uh, how good a offer this was. Um, I told her, well, 
this sounds really really nice and but obviously I have to go talk to my new boss and see if he will let me go you know I got a contract already but you know I'll go talk to him and see what he say so I got back on the scooter and drove back to the to the language to the new language school where I had a contract and uh, went to talk to the owner well I kind of put the you know told him straight out what was up and, and uh, told him how much he was gonna pay me and, and uh, everything you know and uh, and this guy he just looked at me and he said well you know what I'm not gonna stand in between that because I'm not gonna stop you from accepting that offer because that is such a great offer that if you don't take that job you will regret it for the rest of your time in Thailand. And he was like, he, he took out my contract and he just tore it in half and said, you're released from your contract, don't worry. So uh, I sure can and uh, I wish you can and, and I told him that I, that was very nice of him, you know, and, and everything. So uh, I drove back to the, to the, uh, private school it was like a primary private primary school and uh, told the owner well he agreed to it and he relieved me of my contract so yes please then she looked at me and said well then there's only one thing left we need to do I like to talk to your wife and I was like uh, okay uh, well yeah let's uh, let's go talk to my wife so uh, we uh, drove back to the I got on my scooter and she followed in the car and we drove back to our guest house at this time my wife and I had started a guest house in town uh, where my wife was working and uh, and when we arrived there the owner of this primary school and my wife sat down and talked to each other in Thai um, and uh, I was just sitting there at the table and didn't understand anything of what they said and just like, well, <laughs> what's going on? But it was kind of funny. And after a little while they shook hands and I was hired. So, uh, you know, in Thailand they, they do different things different. And, well, I have to say, both the owner of this primary school and my wife, they are Chinese. And also, I have to say, my wife was the child of a single mom the owner of the school was a single mom so they kind of you know they are Chinese and the single mom thing and and being the boss she was the boss of the school my wife was the boss of the guest house and everything so they had this thing you know and and it was just kind of funny uh, almost I almost felt like this schoolboy who uh, whose mom and and the boss was having a conversation about my future job <laughs> but it was it was great um, and I worked for this school for the rest of the time we stayed in Thailand for four years or uh, three years actually three and a half years and and it was wonderful I enjoyed it I enjoyed that job so much um, I had some great students, I had some sweet colleagues, um, most of the colleagues I couldn't talk to because they didn't speak English. Uh, there was a couple who I could actually talk to and, well, it, the, the owner of the school told me that if I had any problems I should come to her because her English was very good, uh, but even the, even the principal at the school who was actually the daughter of the owner did not speak English. So any communication between me and the school would be through the owner of the school. And she was a very nice lady and, and she she took care of everything, the work permit and, and everything. She just fixed it. So, um, so that was really great and as I said, wonderful time and wonderful students. They, it was just you know, I had such a great time there, and as I say, I I taught from five from five year olds to eighteen year olds, and well, of course, it is different teaching in Thailand than it would be in Denmark, but still, I I had this thing the the way I teached 
down there was very different from the way the Thai teachers would teach and also the way I was, how to say, yeah, the way I was around the students. I was kind of this, I guess in the eyes of the students, I was this cool guy who uh, was their teacher, but at the same time also their friend. And usually in Denmark, I would never do it this way because that wouldn't work. Because if you become their friend, you lose their, well, you basically lose the authority uh, and you can't control them. But in Thailand, that worked. It perfectly, perfectly worked because they wanted to be my friend, because I was this cool guy and, and I was this foreigner who they knew never knew what I would do. You know, I would do all kinds of crazy stuff and and fun games and stuff like that. And, and I have this idea, if you motivate kids, if they have motivation, they will learn. And well, it worked out. And, and as I said, I had a great three, three and a half year um, working as a teacher at that school. So it was really great. I better, I better end this video here. Uh, I am sure it's already way too long. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Have a great time. You guys take care. And remember... Life is good. Bye-bye.